Hello everyone, I'm Matt from ADHD Gone Wild 7, and to celebrate 2,000 subscribers, we're going to do a little commentary, a little bit of background on the 80, the, uh, I'm sorry, the <laughs> Diabolic Lovers of Rage series. I'm going to give you a little commentary and just some background information, the behind the scenes information on how it came to, how it happened. If I can learn to speak, we'll get started. So I'm using... Uh, the game capture because of how fast paced this is and just because of how easily I'm distracted and just because there's a lot I can say about it so I just wanted to be able to stop and start whenever and if I'm going to use the screen capture if I'm going to use the capture card I might as well face cam it so here we are oh and now that that's out of the way let's actually before we get started let's get some background information um, so this was back to the summer of 2015 we were working on Elfin Lead at the time. Yeah, we were working on Elfin Lead at the time, and we had hit one of many setbacks on that. One of the many setbacks on that project. And so one summer day, me and my sister were just hanging out, and she had mentioned Diabolic Lovers before, and we decided to watch it. And yeah, just immediately after I watched it, I just pulled my computer out and started scripting. And within 15 minutes, I, the script was done. And then my sister recorded immediately after. And Zach just happened to have been coming over that day. So that evening, we, uh, me and Zach recorded our lines. And within a couple weeks, we had it out. And let's get started. Oh my god. Hello? The quality's come a long Are way. The silence in this part actually plays a part in the entire series, and I'll explain why later. But, uh... <laughs> hey! What are you doing? Dibs! I call Dibs, this one's mine, I liked it! What's going on in here? Please help me! So the Dibs joke, if anything, probably comes from, uh... It comes from a story within my family. Like, uh, my dad and his uncle, when my grandmother made, like, cookies or brownies or something, uh, my dad and his uncle would lick them so that no one else would want them and call dibs on them. And since Yui has seen us food in this series, we did, that's kind of just where that joke came from. And, I don't know, it just, it worked somehow. <laughs> and, I don't know. Here. This guy, he, he just. Dibs. Wait, what? Too late. I already called it. I'm mm. older. I got seniority. Oh yeah. So we well, only seen the first it. episode at this point, <laughs> and uh, everything yeah, else that, that happened to work out no, uh, just was first. completely by chance. Hey, I, want it. I mean, I we just ran with the information that gave him the first that episode. Works. So. I'll break you like I broke this one. It's mine. This is before I learned how to properly mix too. So there's a lot of background stuff that. There's a lot of background stuff that <laughs> it's easy to get lost, but we have, um, that's why we made the the background stuff videos where you can hear everything separated out. And those are actually videos we're able to monetize, so if you really love the series, go ahead and listen to them, because those are stuff we can monetize, and that's a good way to support us. But um, this part right here, I, I remember seeing that, I asked my sister, like, hey, does this guy come back at all? And she's like, yeah, he... Kind of, but not really. And he really doesn't. So we just threw in this old, uh, the old vine here. And just threw it in there. And yeah, it just happened. It worked really well. Yeah, I'm trying to remember back two years now. So it's it'll get better as we get closer to now. Stop breaking my stuff. It's mine. I can break my stuff if I want to. Soon you'll be all mine, and I'll play with you for hours and hours and hours on end. And everyone's favorite part. <laughs> it's funny listening to you guys or seeing you guys describe what Kanato's doing in the comments. Uh, like, several people have several different ideas of what he's doing there. And I'm just gonna keep quiet on that, just, you know, to keep that going, because it gets really funny. <laughs> but... It's mine! It's mine! It's mine! 
So if you're listening in the background, you can hear Zach going, Bear witness to my ascension! And that's actually a, uh, a Dawn of War, a Warhammer 40k reference. And Zach and I are Dawn of War fans, and um, I don't know, his super voice just kind of made him feel like one of the characters in that. So he decided to pull a quote there, and... I, it was like at the end of the recording session. He's like, all right, before we finish, I just got to do this. And then he did that. <laughs> and I decided to throw it in right here. So, um, yeah, it's just another little Easter egg. It's mine. Wait. Where'd it go? There are several points in this where I had to throttle the performance out of my sister, Jessie, and Zach. And anyone else involved, really. But... Everybody did a fantastic job, and it made it work really well. Mine. <laughs> so after this came out, um, yeah, at first it didn't really do much. Like we had released it right after the hype had died down, and so like at first when we released it, it was it didn't get much, and then. When the school year started, it started picking up, and now it's where it is today. But, um, yeah, when it did pick up, a lot of people were literally begging us to continue. So, we su <laughs> they were literally begging us to continue, so we suffered through the series, and I mean suffered, through the rest of the series, and I don't know exactly... I don't remember exactly the inspiration to all this, but oh god, like it was during a time I was also in a play. I was in school my senior year, and like there was so much going on, and I was exhausted all the time, and yet somehow this came to me in the midst of all that, and it, it's this one and the last one are constantly. I can't decide which one's my favorite. But yeah, let's get started on this one. So let's get started. <laughs> I don't know why or how this came to me, but it did. Yeah, I love it. Yui, what you're hearing here love. is actually a part of the first episode being played backwards. <laughs> and that's happening in her dream right now, so. I, I had the weirdest dream. <laughs> Extremely abusive, and for some reason, people around the world thought it was romantic. And Jesus, my love. yeah, that's pretty much There's our stance no in this whole in this whole you. anime. You really mean it? <laughs> you are a strong and independent woman. How could we bring ourselves to harm? Yeah, this. So Everyone beautiful. did really well in this part. <laughs> So, um, another thing that actually helped the first episode kick off was also, around that time, I had also discovered the Abridged Forum, and uh, I had posted it there, and Annex was actually the first one to respond to my post and actually give me some constructive criticism. That silence I was talking about earlier was what he was, or what he uh, was talking about, and he's saying, yeah, you should add more fully, more, you know more background noise and um, yeah that actually was very helpful advice it helped me a lot and it's something I've improved greatly over the videos but um, he does Abridged Gellion uh, Evangelion Abridged and the funny thing was I had uh, already subscribed to him like a couple months earlier when we would just go, when I posted that but um, yeah since he was the first one to welcome me to the forum I reached out to him when we decided to make this and was like, hey, you want to play Shu? And he was like, yeah, sure. And uh, at first, like, his style and my style are very different. And he didn't quite understand what I was wanting. But after, you know, a lot of retakes and stuff, we finally got, he finally got what I wanted. We finally got out of him what I wanted for the character. And when he saw the actual episode, it all made sense to him. And, uh, sorry. The camera keeps... Let me get off the table. <laughs> when he finally saw the episode, it, it all made sense to him. Like, my, my style, the way, my directing, it, it, it finally made sense to him. 
and he's loved it ever since. Like he can't wait to do more episodes. And yeah, he did. He just he did a fantastic job this year. So. <laughs> Mine? And yes, that is lie uh, If you all want it, you're just gonna have to share it. <laughs> I got first tips. No, I do. No, me. You, you guys I'm realize that this out. is just a <laughs> joke. <laughs> all right, this here might be the most intelligent joke in the entire series. The tragedy of the commons, if you don't know, is a uh, it's an academic paper on why common property is a bad thing and why it doesn't work. And uh, you could basically summarize it as why sharing is bad at least in a competitive system. So that pretty much summarizes this whole episode, is why sharing is bad. His version of Twilight, right? <laughs> Japanese version of Twilight was also Zach's improv. I'm going first. So. I want to go swimming with it. <laughs> Wait, I can't swim! Stop! This is Zach and Jess at their oh, best. I want to read Get light, <laughs> Subaru, it's my turn. I want to play piano with it. I was in the dorms senior year in college at the time we did this and there's a piano there so i just took my mic and just banged on that piano and that's what you're hearing right there <laughs> i want to play tea party with it there were two scenes that worked i couldn't decide which one to use um, so i decided to overlay one turn. of the other i'm gonna cook ravioli with it and... i wanna play telephone with it you have a bad connection i wanna commit matricide with it what so matricide means to kill your mother just in case you don't know. And um, the funny thing about this whole thing was that, like, we went through the series finding, you know, because basically the entire series is just them going through a bunch of random scenarios. And we decided to take that as a scenario... <laughs> Sorry. We decided to take those scenarios and, uh, yeah, just kind of make a montage of them. And so we pulled them together, and it wasn't quite as much as we wanted so we decided to just pull other things and just make random silly little activities for them to do. <laughs> and the funny thing is, if you haven't seen the show, it's just so perfectly random that it's just, if you've seen the show, it makes it that much funnier because you can tell which ones actually happened and which ones haven't. And it's just, I think it's in a way that makes it enjoyable whether you've seen it or not. And that's ultimately, I think, what everyone should strive for when they're making the bridge series. Hey, no fair! It was my turn! Your turn! You mean it's my turn! We also had a formula here where we have a montage and then Kanato, who... The goal with Kanato was to make him as unpredictable as possible. And, um... Here he's serving as a transition. Like, we have the montage, Kanato, and then a shoe bit. Uh, and the shoe that I'll get to when we get to it. <laughs> uh, this is such a douchey song. Oh, you didn't tell me what I wanted to hear. That. So the shoe bit, um, I just, I didn't know what kind of character to make for shoe. Like I didn't want him to make, I didn't want to make him one of the brothers just because of how lazy he was. Like he didn't really have the energy that. The other brothers had so I wanted to make him separate from them so I noticed that he was wearing headphones all the time and decided to make him listen to music and at the time we were doing this rude was a big song and I really don't like that song <laughs> like uh, the what he's expressing here was kind of my opinion at the time and I was thinking about doing like a review of the song but just never got around to it and then this happened you know we got to this and I just thought it would be funny to basically to integrate that review into the series just to help the pace and just because it's a funny random tangent to what's going on <laughs> and it's, it turned out beautifully but yeah this is basically my opinion of Rude from the mouth of shoe <laughs> makes you rude I'm the victim <laughs> Just keep complaining about it. You're just proving her father right. I mean, I don't know what the story behind the song is, but these lyrics lack a lot of details. And like I said, for pacing and stuff, we just break really it up. Douchey. We go back to montage, Kanato, and then Shu. <laughs> it's, that's the formula. I want to work on chemistry with it. I want to do some gardening with it. 
so that ragey bit was another one where there were two scenes that worked and I decided to overlap them. That screw you rosebush part was another one of Zach's improv. And here, a lot of people didn't get this one. The song that's playing here is a Bon Jovi song, Bed of Roses. And just because he's laying Yui <laughs> down on an altar with a bunch of roses on it, I decided to you know, play that and have him play Bon Jovi with it. So that's the joke there. I wanna play Bon Jovi with it. I wanna pay my taxes with it. I wanna give it a hickey. I want to be in visual. So we knew it was a visual novel at the time. We we didn't know anything about it, but we decided to use that as one of them. So that we get visual novels, and then of course the joke on Subaru's name well, being in a Subaru. Huh? I want to be in product placement with it. Huh? I want to make suicide. And of all the scenarios, that one was the most extreme. So. <laughs> It's not just some formality. Asking him for permission. And in the to spirit of randomness, she's in a tub. Worthy to join the family. <laughs> it's... If he says no, the proper thing to do is ask what you need to do to earn her you're hand. You're supposed to be then hearing the song here. And make a I don't know why you're not. You need to Something happened. And if he's willing to negotiate, when it was rendered, as long but... as the conditions are reasonable, then there's nothing. I to think it's pretty clear it. he's still listening to the song. Making the changes you agreed upon proves to him that you love his daughter more than you love yourself. I said it's mine. You're the youngest. You never licked Get it. Get out of here, Subaru. I saw it first. I licked it first. That makes it. My. So we had all that going, and we realized we didn't really have a way to end it. <laughs> so I just decided to blame it on Subaru and use a, a running scene of Yui just to make it, you know, just to find a way to make it end. So that's how this ending came about. And ever since then, Subaru's just been the perfect punching bag for the series. So. <laughs> what the? There's no frowning face of Lyoto there, so I just turned his smile upside down. <laughs> Who let it out? If I can't have it, then no one can have it. Well, oh, come on, now we all have to go. Don't you let it out? Come, come on. on, that was my oh, man. Man. I say everyone did a fantastic job, but some of the parts I really had to throw out a lot of them. And this episode I actually had to re-upload because I accidentally misspelled Annex's name, so. Uh, I'm glad you caught that early, because it was... It's kind of funny now, but it was embarrassing at the time. What the? So... This and the last episode were actually one. I am shaking the camera, I'm sorry. Uh, I need a better stand. Um, so... This episode and the last episode were actually written as one episode. And just because of how awkward it was to have her running and, you know, yelling freedom like that. And then just coming back to them talking like this. It was, just, it was an awkward scene. So it worked out better just to have this as a separate episode. That's why this one's so much shorter. But, um, it's also why she was still in... He's not so much in but he's talking about her still. But, um, For example, say the reason he says no is because you're a musician and he's concerned you won't be able to financially support his daughter. Where was I going with that? Saying no just tells him... So yeah, that's why they're still rude playing here and why he's still talking about the song. And that just made it funnier because, you know, it's like... It's a whole new episode, but he's still talking about the song. So... I did this for myself and I'm going to leech off your daughter until things work out. On the other hand, if it's your passion, oh, you shouldn't just give up. If the problem is money, then make a compromise. Like, agree to get a part-time job. Yeah, this job was released on Halloween. A That's the other thing. Like, it was that almost way, Halloween at the time, so I was like, you know what? I'll just save his daughter. the second part for responsible And, pull some and of your this own one was released. Shoo! It got out. Quit having controversial monologues and help us find it. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> 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 All right, now that we got my stuff back, your stuff. Shut up, Subaru. <laughs> this is all your fault to be Say hi, Uncle Listen very carefully to this part. Some of our best improv moments just happen in the background here. <laughs> This is some of the funniest stuff. So in the actual show, for absolutely no reason, no logical reason, Yui stabs herself to stop people from fighting. 
And it was just the perfect way to end the first season. Like was to have her kill herself to get out of this. <laughs> what the? Who gave it a knife? It's mine. I can give it sharp objects if I want to. Really? <laughs> 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 you so yeah, that scream was another just funny moment that ended up in the actual show. <laughs> but um, this part here, Ghost Yui, this was around the time when I had just gotten Photoshop, and you know, I thought, I've used Premiere and Audition, so it's an Adobe product, so it shouldn't be that much harder to use, right? And I spent two hours trying to figure the damn thing out, and it was just, it was so frustrating. Like, Adobe Photoshop is nothing like the other two. <laughs> so, like, I was originally trying to create a Ghost Napa sprite for Yui, and after two hours of trying to figure out Photoshop, like, even very basic functions, I was like, screw it, and I went to, I did what I always did, which is improvise with Premiere, and that's how this Ghost Yui was formed. Honestly, I like this Ghost Yui much better than the, uh, the sprite Team Four Star has for Napa, so... This is the most obscure joke in the whole thing. Um, just because I, I did a horrible job setting it up. But um, when I released One Shot, it was actually a one shot. So when we finally made the second episode, um, I was going to change it to episode one, episode two. But then I heard the Eminem song, One Shot, Two Shot. And it gave me the idea to do the one shot, two shot episode. And then as a joke to that song, this episode was called All I Hear Is Gunshots, and now he's listening to it at the end, and he's like, oh, now I get it, as in that joke. That was, yeah, it was just like no one got it because I did a horrible job setting it up. But yeah, that's what that whole, that's what the title joke's about. And another funny bit about the titles is that um, because I upload Diabolic Lovers videos, uh, YouTube recommends a lot of Diabolic Lovers videos to me, and that's part of what inspired the Ghost Yui bit. But, um, one day when I was going through comments, I saw someone else was using, making Diabolic Lovers videos and using the one-shot, two-shot title format. Like, they were copying our title. And they were going up to, like, 10-shot, 11-shot, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> and... Like, when people copy you like that, you'd think you'd get angry about it. But honestly, it's really flattering more than anything. So, you know, it, it never bothered us. But it's just something funny we found one day about our title. Oh, now I get it. And no one else does. <laughs> the song is horrible. So the Ghost Yui bit was... A little skit I decided to make in the meantime while I was, I believe I was casting for um, the second season at this time. That might, no, I think I was just writing it. But um, yeah, just like I was saying earlier, just because YouTube was recommending me a bunch of other Diabolic Lovers videos and just how many views they had gotten because they were released back when this show actually had some hype to it. Um, I just noticed that a lot of them were, you know, the clickbait or just, you know, diehard fans of the show. And um, it's just the idea of Yui being, you know, in the situation she's in, finding out about all these videos kind of is kind of what inspired this skit. And this was supposed to be a skit, an easy skit that I could do in like, you know, a weekend. And huh? just because of the way I was doing yeah. things and just, I was doing it the most, like, I was doing it the most difficult way possible. Let's check it out. Like, I should have been doing it much easier. But, um, this place? it ended up taking two weeks. And it was just a nightmare to get through. And part of the reason, as you can see here a bit, is just how fuzzy the text is. Like, you can, like here, you can barely see in the search bar, Team Four Star typed in. And funny story about that is, I had originally planned on doing a pass by of Team Four Star and then another one, a little Kribo. But for the reason of pacing and just because 
and for pacing and everything else, I decided to combine them. So we have Team Four Stars Sprite here, or channel here, I'm sorry. Team Four Stars channel, and right under it is Little Kribo's channel, even though it says Team Four Star in the search bar there. <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> romantic? What is wrong with you people? This and is of not course, romantic. there's the uh, Banjo Kazooie music, but oh, yep. no, no, go, stop it. Go back. Okay. <laughs> so, like I was saying earlier, the fuzziness of the text was a big problem because of the fact that she was interacting with the videos. So, I had to make the video title and the views that it got much larger than the rest of it. That's why it's so big here. And even that, and just doing that for every video she comes across and uh, making it seem like it was all part of one clip is what made this take so long. Oh no! Stop, no! Two million views? <laughs> Do you people really? Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she, was, she did fantastic here. And basically, if I remember right, this was just, she was having a bad day. And I was like, hey, I got a way to vent out your, I have a way for you to vent out your frustration. And she's like, good, let's do it. <laughs> and she just got to the booth and started yelling at the at the mic. And it turned out beautifully because of that. So. Subaru bites me? <laughs> Why are there hearts around that? My life was a living nightmare with those people. Why would a million people want to watch this? Favorite but Seven million? Uh, the maker of this video actually ended up finding this video <laughs> and she's commented in it and yeah, she loves it, but it's just funny how it, you know, small world, you know, <laughs> it's... I can help. What did I do to deserve this? That! Oh my god. <laughs> it's... We're almost at like 25,000 now, but this is back at 11,000. Oh my god, I think I got 200 subscribers there, too. <laughs> but yeah, she's coming out of Kanato's new gig. And, um... Which has been left out of this list for obvious reasons. But, um... I think part of the reason why... I made Kanato's new gig for two reasons. One is because... We had intentionally made Diabolic Lovers as friendly... As family-friendly as we can. That was just a decision we made. And, uh... It's, it's not reflective of our channel. Like, we do whatever we want, regardless of it. We don't really censor or do anything like that. And um, because Diabolic Lovers was becoming the cornerstone of our channel at the point, I made this partly just to show people that, hey, this work doesn't exactly represent us. Like, we're capable of doing other things, too. Of doing stuff like this, too. And the other reason was, like I was saying earlier, about how people were, you know... Like, there are several different ideas of what Kanato is doing back in episode one. And this is just another hint at what he's actually doing <laughs> to go to, Yui, or to Yui at that point. No, but... no, no! <laughs> what even is this? Why are you people glorifying this? Oh, no, man. Any of this cute? This... No, no, I'm done. I'm just done. She did such an awesome job on this. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, haven't I already been here? How the hell do I get to heaven? <laughs> Next time on the adventures of Ghost Yui. Oh, oh god, now what? And that is the Deviant Art logo. Some people were asking that in the comments, ah! but that's where she's going. <laughs> So yeah, this is actually our first, well, my first face reveal was uh, when we were announcing that we were doing uh, the second season. And uh, like this was shortly before I was give, just about to graduate and a buddy of mine had a, uh, you know, he did photojournalism and stuff like that. 
and uh, asked him if he could, you know, use his camera and his equipment to make the skit. And he's like, yeah, sure. And so he came, like, this is a, uh, I guess, kind of a game room that was back in my old dorm. And, um, yeah, we just got some of my sister's friends together, and uh, my sister and some of her friends are playing the the fangirls. And basically, we just recreated the scene where fangirls have captured me and are forcing me to watch the second season of the show so that I can make an abridged series for it. And... Yeah, I didn't release this. Like, we had filmed this before I graduated. But this was released after I graduated. Because I was still casting at the time. And, uh... And I'm very happy with the cast we got for the second season. Like, everybody did a fantastic job. We're starting to get some more recent stuff, so this is a little easier now. <laughs> but... <laughs> at the end yeah like I, you know, I had the tape of my mouth and I told one of my sister well this is at the tape of my mouth I pointed at my sister's friend and I was like looked, pointed at my friend I was like roll her ripping my fan, the tape off of my face and it just you know just cause we thought it'd be funny and it was so I put it at the end here <laughs> oh yeah so YouTube decided to remove this episode so I had to re-upload it so production of this was actually interrupted by Tiba Tiba 2016 and uh, that's the reason why both of them happen to have the demonic well the devil worshiper subplot to them like this was already written that the brothers would do a satanic ritual to bring Yui back and that's how we got her back for the second season. And, um, just because of that, our Tiba entry happened to involve satanic rituals, so. Um, yeah, when we first were doing this, with the, when it came to the second season, I saw the first episode and knew what I wanted to do with this first episode. But after that, it, it didn't come to me as clearly as, like, I wasn't sure what to do with it. So, Zach, who hasn't even seen the first season yet, was like, hey, I'll watch it with you, and let's see if we can come up with something. Because, like, at first, this was my thing, and he just loves how much love we've gotten from it, and, you know, he's learned to love it, because he's learned to love it for you guys, and basically, our love of this series is purely because you guys love it. You guys love it, and we we love you, so we'll continue doing it because of that. But, um, yeah, Zach was... Like, hey, let's co- come over to my place, we'll watch it, and we suffered through the second season, which it happened to be a carbon copy of the first season. Just They were just slightly less abusive. And when I realized that after watching it the second time with him, that gave me the idea of making this second season basically follow the same format as the first season. So this is copying one shot in the way that it sets up the series. So we have Yui arriving to heaven here. I knew if I lived an extremely submissive and repressed lifestyle I'd end up here. Finally! There was months between this and the last episode, that's the joke there. (laughs) And of course, in honor, or, you know, in the continuation of the uh, Finding Nemo joke, they're saying shark bait ulaha backwards here. <laughs> That's the chanting. <laughs> so now, just to keep him unpredictable, Kanato is now singing incoherently. He's singing Bad Blood by uh, yeah, Katy Perry. <laughs> and he's, instead of saying Bad Blood, he's saying More Blood. So that's what he's doing in the background here. Did you do something with your hair? <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, it looks really nice. Shut up. I didn't know what else, you know, I didn't really have another song to make fun of at the time, so I just decided to have Shu 
listen to something different each time we did this. I liked it better when you criticized me. Shut and up! What part of shut up do you not understand? How come? Like I said earlier, um, she was voice actor Annex did it Abridge, uh, Abridge Gillian, so I threw in the Evangelion theme song as one of those songs. Come Kanato gets to. <laughs> Never mind. Why are you so angry? And he got a kick Why? out of that too. Like he loved it. <laughs> I trusted you to be mature enough to share it. What did you do? You fight over it, kill it, then perform a satanic ritual to bring it back! So? So? So now there's a magic circle burnt onto the living room floor, and it has to be replaced. Do you have any idea how much it's going to cost? It's not that bad. Yes, it is! I don't want to see it and anything you cover it with go up in flames, as you learned when you tried to hide it under that priceless rug. Does anyone have any dental floss? So this is after Tiba when we made this, and uh, I had met I met a couple of people, well not in person, but I've you know talked to a couple of people who were also in Tiba, and one of them what happened to be um, uh, Kion Tachibana, that's his name. He did the uh, the Higurashi Simulator one, and I was asking him how he did some of the edits he did, and he was kind enough to teach me how to do the eye bits that we see here. And I just, you know, he just taught me how to do that. And I just kind of went crazy with the eye joke because of it. So stop. Get big again. There we go. My nipples are really itchy. <laughs> There's that. Oh, other thing. Earlier, um, you heard a K-pop song. And uh, several people in the comments have noticed that. I don't really listen to K-pop, but one of my friends, a um, and actually the voice actress for Ritsuka in the um, in our TV entry, she she loves K-pop. So I just asked her. I just sent her a message saying, "Hey, off the top of your head, give me a K-pop song," and she gave me that one. So I used it. And then after this episode came out, she listened when she saw it. She messaged me like. That's what you wanted it for? <laughs> it's like, and then she started sending me a bunch of other stuff that would have worked too. And like the other options would have been great, but the point of this was to be random. So <laughs> like this song, it worked out, but you know, it was just funny. Like I told her it would be a surprise when she asked me before this episode came out. And then she just loved it when it came out. So. <laughs> Dave, you must not have done it right. There's clearly something wrong with it. None of this would have happened if you had just agreed it's mine. No. No, we are not doing that anymore. We are going to spend the rest of this car ride in complete silence. Hey, if we what did I just say? Can I? Shut up! But this is no, I said no! Can I? No, I said no! I mean no! Right, right, right. No, get off that bus! I don't even care who's driving! So this joke here was one of the ones I knew I wanted to do. Like I said, the first episode I knew I wanted... What I knew how I wanted to do that? it. Was that everything after that I don't that know. I had to rewatch the series to figure out? I was done for. <laughs> and someone grabbed me, and I was here. You're welcome. <laughs> Target sighted. That was just something I randomly wrote down, <laughs> like right before we recorded. And <laughs> it's like one of my favorite parts of that whole episode. And because she said Nye at the end of that, you know, Bill Nye the science guy, she puts this part at the end here. <laughs> the science guy. And the whole goal here was to set them up as like this badass, you know, tactical team. And then we get to the second episode and target acquired. <laughs> we reveal what they really are. Now this is when we first started doing a uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Click the links to check out the insights. <laughs> so watch the series from the beginning. Be sure to lick that like and subscribe button.
and call dibs in the comments below. Special thanks to everyone who helped us out. Check them out on their own channels linked in the description below. Follow us on social media and... Why is the back door open? Subaru, did you let it out again? I told you not to touch my stuff! So episode one and episode two of season two here was, um, they were written, recorded, everything was done at the same time. That's why I was able to release episode one and two so quickly. But the real reason why they came out so quickly was at this point, my old computer was dying. And like, I was just terrified that I would lose all this. So I was racing to get this out. And this bit here, <laughs> like I had said earlier, I was planning on copying the formula of the first season in the second season just to make fun of the fact that um, that that's basically what it is. It's a carbon copy of the first season. And uh, so we opened with a, just like in Two Shot, this one opens up with Yui's dream. But now that she's a little messed up, this is what her dreams look like. And this was something I just... Like, right after I uploaded the first episode... I mean, the uh, the first episode of the second season... Um, I just grabbed a bunch of random sources and just threw them together. And it was kind of like a stew. It just kind of came together and worked out perfectly. <laughs> it's just... It just kind of fell into place. And... Yeah. Well, at the same time, I was mixing in scenes from the first episode just to make it, you know, fit, you know, to just kind of make it a, uh, a recap, a very small subject. It's Taco Day! Oh, good, you're awake. Mademoiselle, are you, are you all right? Okay? Did I miss you? You're in a So, yeah, these guys here, uh, the Veth guys, like everyone did fantastic. I've I've said that multiple times now, but um Yeah, I had held audition an audition on the uh a bridge form. And that's how Chavins, the guy who plays Azusa, yeah, Azusa came in. And uh I think it's also how I met Sanji, who plays Yuma. And um I don't know, when I first heard Sanji's recording or the audition he submitted, I wasn't sure at first. Like, it wasn't quite what I had in mind. But I decided to just talk to him anyway and, you know, give him a call back. And, you know, we just, we talked for almost an hour. Just, you know, talking about bridging and stuff like that. And then when I learned he was in uh, Gigix, he was he was Shinji in Gigix, uh, Eva Bridged. And I was just like, oh my god, that's perfect. <laughs> I'll give Yuma Shinji's voice. You know, the, the biggest, toughest one there relatively speaking, we'll have, you know, Shinji's wimpy voice. And, yeah, the, the guy who plays Sanji, he loves it. <laughs> like, he, he's always anxious. He and Shu both are anxious to, you know, do another episode. Like, he, he loves it so much, he actually has a, uh, one of those cell phone charms of Yuma to commemorate his role here. And, I don't know, I'm just... The other two, uh, Grimjack and Mark, or Gao Gai King, um, were people I'd either worked with in the past or reached out to. Like, I reached out to Grimjack, and to my disbelief, he actually responded. And Mark, I, I met in another project I tried to work on, and that's a, that's a long story for a different time. But, yeah, they just... It was a bit... Getting them to, we're getting all these voices in from a large cast like this is a bit, it's a bit tough, but everybody did a fantastic job, and I'm very happy with the results they had. I, I can you go okay? to the kitchen. Are you right? I can get you a pillow, some water. Are you okay? Hey, you I, I can get you a pillow. Oh boy, that's good. Oh, 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 she just woke up in a strange new place. Can't you see how scared she is? Of course, you're right. 
Actually, that bit, the Mario Kart bit where her eyes were spinning, I threw that in there just because the argument scene was happening too long. It was affecting the pace, but I didn't want to cut it short because I loved what the guys were... Like, the guys, like, they started it scripted, and then from there... Excuse me. From there, they started improvising, and I just loved what they improvised for these characters, and I didn't want to cut that out. So I threw that part in there to help keep the pace going, while at the same time... Leaving Let's them start in. With so. My name is Ko. My name is Yuma. Mon nom es <laughs> and I'm Ruki. And of course, mainly just because of the beret. <laughs> Azusa is French. So. I'm sorry if we scared you, but when we saw how those vampires were treating you, we had to intervene. You see, we are members of Veth. Vampires <laughs> for the ethical treatment of humans! <laughs> Oh, start? That's another favorite joke of mine. I think that actually came from... I think I had an idea for an Attack on Titan skit called Teth. Where uh, we had titans that were trying to protect humans. And I just recycled that idea here. And I think it works out so much better here than it did with that Attack on Titan idea. So, I don't know. That's just one of my favorite jokes in this thing. Fish smell like? I, I, I don't know. The ocean, I guess? Uh, anyways... You can live here with us until we can find a better home for you. Are you okay with that? Purple sunflowers! <laughs> right. I'll take that as a yes. Make yourself at home. Dinner's at six. Till then, go get some rest. I'm bored. Me too. Want to play a game? Sure. Like a card game? I really don't remember how this one came along. The idea for this came along. But now that Yui's gone, they get around. They get along famously. <laughs> that was kind of a joke I would have thrown with. So. This shrimp was a living creature. It had the same right to life as you and me. Well, if a shrimp ever wants to eat my dead cooked body, it can. Till then, that's my dinner. These animals are alive. Don't you care about their pain? But we share. Aren't plants also alive? How do you know they do not get pain? All right, that's enough. Oh man, they're so we awesome. We are the first and only <laughs> Veth organization. Let's just focus on saving humans for now. Ah, human, come join us. Birds must be really scared. Another favorite line of mine. They keep screaming. <laughs> ah. Is everything to your liking? Pass the syrup. <laughs> Does syrup go with any of this? What makes it great is that Yui's facial expressions, syrup. they fit. Like, she's just so blank <laughs> throughout this whole show. So I've been thinking this for a while now, but I believe something's <laughs> wrong with that human. I agree. Poor thing. She must be so traumatized. You're right. And it's up to us to rehabilitate her. Can we do such a thing? Aren't there other humans that could help her? No. So this was another part that I struggled with when it came to the writing. Um, just like before, where we had to create random stuff for them to do, to pad it out, uh, we were kind of falling short on stuff they could do to rehabilitate her. And I didn't really know how to use other scenes to make rehab jokes. And, you know, I was really struggling with the idea, and then it just hit me to use other vampire anime and just mix them into it. And it just, it worked out brilliantly. Has to be us. Do anything and everything you can to help her. Right. <laughs> I'll go first. Rehabilitation by kindness. <laughs> I actually mixed like Grim Jack's laughter from another part. I don't know. He was laughing at something, and I just took that laughter and put that at the beginning of that because it just, it just like his natural laughter is. Perfect. For that part. <laughs> I should do this. It's my turn. Rehab my gardening. <laughs> my garden. <laughs> In the background, that's Sanji. Uh, that's Sanji's improv back there. <laughs> Rehab by art and culture. Rehab by strip piece. <laughs> Rehab by equestrian recreation. This part was also pretty fun to make. Um, so what I did here was I found a really trippy animation on YouTube. I got that animation. And then um, it was like an acid trip from the um, an anime called Serial Experiments Lane. 
And that's an older anime. And one thing older anime is famous for is their acid trips. Like, they get real trippy. So I just took the serial experiment slaying the acid trip and I keyed it into the trippy animation and created my own little acid trip. And that's what, that's what Yuma's going through here. <laughs> oh man, I wish I knew how to mix better when I did this. Because a lot of the audio overlaps. And how does that make you feel? <laughs> so another thing about my charming little sister is that behind the mic, almost every time she gets behind the mic, she ends up burping. <laughs> like, that is not a sound effect, that is her. And I just took several of her burps and overlapped them and made one massive burp for that scene right there. <laughs> and, oh my god. That's my sister for you. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen those yes. friends get along so well in such a long time. Quite refreshing, really. Then playing Twister in the background. <laughs> no, wait! I can't swim. <laughs> Rehab by festival. Rehab by book club. Rehab by musical. Rehab by space exploration. Rehab by book sex. Rehab by normal sex. <laughs> So like I said, I tried to make this show family friendly, but I saw these scenes and I just couldn't help myself. So, <laughs> but they're one of the funniest parts of this whole show. <laughs> and of course, that's a homage to uh, Ceiling Cat right there. <laughs> what do you think we see this? Oh, what's that called? Is that a rock test? Right, right. Okay. Like, uh, part of the joke was, um, just like before when Kanato was the transition to Shu, here, Azusa is the transition to Ruki. And Ruki is the only one who's doing something that is anything, is, you know, remotely related to psychology when it comes to rehab, so... <laughs> Like the first time was how, you know, doing the stereotypical psychiatrist question, you know, the, how does that make you feel? And this one, the, uh, the Rorkshire test. And just having them in the background, <laughs> it's just, it all turned out beautifully. This was around the time when, uh, Caitlyn Jenner won the ESB Courage Award and Brett Favre, like something blew up. It was really stupid. But, you know, people were getting upset that Brett Favre, during the applause, just kind of went like this after she passed. Because <laughs> he, yeah, like, and people just got so upset about it. So, that's the joke here. She's saying Brett Favre won the award and her eyes are doing this. <laughs> so, it's very subtle and very dated, but that's the joke. We're in a mansion in the middle of nowhere. Hey, I'm so proud of you boys. You're working together to take responsibility. Oh my god. <laughs> so, oh god, I gotta stop doing that. Um, <laughs> this was before I moved into the apartment I'm in now. I was still in my parents' place because I just graduated. And <laughs> when I, you know, started put when I put this together, like this is the red versus blue warthog theme. But with the construction noises, if you live in the south, like I do, it... <laughs> when I put this together, I had to ask my mom, like, Mom, um, is this racist? <laughs> having Mexican music with all these construction sounds, and she just died laughing. <laughs> but at, at that point, I, you know, we were pretty sure that people would recognize Red vs. Blue. The Warhog theme, so <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it was funny, but yeah, I didn't even just have them being responsible. It's a lost cause, all we can do is keep her safe from the world. But solitary confinement is this really ethical? What else can we do? 
I said it was like a cool photo. Hey guys. That took a while to make in Photoshop, but <laughs> that was. When we took Asusa to the hospital, <laughs> they worked out I talked well. to an actual therapist. You did? Yeah. It turns <laughs> out the best way to rehabilitate someone is to help them live normally. <laughs> what? I know, right? Who would have guessed? Well, that's a school night. Let's give it a shot. <sighs> All right, gang. Commence rehab by normal living. Yeah! yeah! I can't remember the last time I had so much fun. Oh, yeah. I don't know. So at this point, my computer is barely holding together. So. <laughs> and Grimjack actually commented on this. Well, not in the comments, but he, when we talked after this, he, he pointed this out. But that, like, he's pointing out that it was basically, you know, cutouts walking across. And like I said, I had to do that because my computer was dying and I wanted to get this done. That's why the movement's so <laughs> janky. But um, the other reason why they're cutouts and not actual parts from the anime, like, you know, would normally have done is just because almost every scene in this show is a close-up. We don't have a full body shot of any of the characters. We have more in the second season for the Beth people, but for the original characters in the original season, the first season, there's just no good body shots of them. So I had to use cutouts of them to get through here. And these are the same cutouts I used for the Tiba one. So the movement's not as good because like I said, my computer was dying and I was racing to get this done. I can't believe it took us this long to get I can't believe how good it feels to complete a construction project. I know, right? It's like a great feeling of accomplishment. I love you guys. You're the best brothers a guy could ask for. Oh, I love you too. Come here. You really are the best. You know what? I'm glad we lost it. It might just be the single best thing that has ever happened to us. Next to killing mom? Next to mom dying. There's a little uh, Finding Nemo seagull hiding in there, if you catch it just right. <laughs> but then, one of the funniest ideas I think I had was just having Kanato do the insulate here. <laughs> just having hands come out and... <laughs> Kanato is definitely one of my favorite voices to do, so. Alright, um, we're gonna go ahead and skip Ghost Yui, but everything after this one, um, this is right after I started my new job. I'm living in my apartment now. And, um, well now Zach and I live in separate states. And, yeah, my sister and Zach are in one state, and it's a six hour drive between me and them. So, now when we do things, we have to do it in bulk. Uh, when Zach, you know, comes down. That's why all our Let's Plays are, you know, done in bulk, and basically at this point, this was just when we just started back up, um, and I just had a bunch of ideas, and we had to record them, one after the other. So, that's why, I don't know, a lot of them are a bit... It's difficult jumping from character to character like that in one sitting. And a lot of what we did just didn't really pan out as well as we'd hoped. And, I don't know, this was one of them. Like, this one, Jess wasn't at her best, and the way she delivered her lines just didn't make it work as well as I'd hoped it would. And, um, the, you know, the obvious joke here is that this is when Ghost in the Shell was coming out as a live-action movie, and... <clears throat> Basically, this whole thing was just done because of the joke idea of Ghost Huey in a Shell, just the title. <laughs> and there wasn't that much inspired by it. I think the best part of it is probably the end where they're 
fighting over who gets to keep her. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and skip this one. And by the way, that part at the end is also improvised, so... All right, now for everyone's favorite. <laughs> so like I said, we did all these in one sitting. And, um... Yeah, the... The behind-the-scenes Yandere stuff we did was done probably a month before when Zach visited. And um, we had held on to them just until we got this actual episode out. Because it was this one where we... We had recorded like five or six different deals when we visited that time. This is back in December. And um, this is just the last one we got to for some reason. Which is ironic because this is the you know, one that's become the most popular. But um, yeah, the Yandere simulated model we're using is like the November model because at the time that's what we were using. It just took six months to get it out. So... <laughs> Here we go. There is nothing I don't know, like I'm trying to limit the mind what joke as much as I can again? because I don't want it getting old. Like I'm very worried about overdoing about these characters. With that no other person. That just sounds stupid. But everyone still loves it, so <laughs> it worked here at least. Oh man. Whoa, this is my room? Trying to senpai? See? The boom is really jerky in this because I used the uh meaning he's indirectly mine. This ball mouse here. And it's hard to make precise movements on a ball mouse with your thumb, so Yandere simulator. Or like lingerie simulator. <laughs> Am I right? Huh? Huh? Yeah. And this is the last one we recorded too. I think that might have helped. We were, you Why know, warmed up and ready to go at this time, the but limo? I think this is the best Kanato I've done in this one. My senpai? And hey, Zach's improv was just... He was on fire that... And I'll break you if you <laughs> he was on fire that recording session because like so much of his improv gets, is in here. Punch the wall? Or, I just need to lick him and then he'll be mine directly. <laughs> what? What are you doing? Like, uh... Stop messing around, he's right there! Grow some balls and lick That's improv him. right there, grow some balls and lick him. Um... <laughs> This scene, I sped up and flipped things together just to make it more concise. But <laughs> what is the deal with this? Soundtrack? Yeah. So I work forty plus hours in the oil field, and I do this when I can. So basically, it's all work and sleep for me. And when I was recording this for Shu, like I recorded this with him late November, early December. And um, he was getting married at the time. So, you know, if anyone should be busy and tired, it's him. And when I finally got a chance to call him, like, it was a long week, and I had done a bunch of editing and stuff. And I was just dead. Like, I was just so dead. And I recorded with him, like, his very few lines he had. And by the end of it, he was like, dude, go get some sleep. <laughs> it's like... I was just that out of it and just for someone who's about to get married and you know has every reason to be drop dead exhausted like I was telling me that it's just it was funny but that's kind of a thing I've had to struggle with is trying to balance this and work and my health just because I have a bad habit of working too hard or overworking myself and I just Hopefully I can get to a point where I can do this full time. But till then I just have to keep struggling with both and it's hard to do. But we find a way. Anyway, let's keep going. Is that the classroom? <laughs> oh yeah, I love chemistry. Join club. Well, we can join clubs. I want to join the workshop club. And of course, the whole okay, what about escalating montage that we usually do. We decided to use that with the clubs. Because, you know, the game's not quite finished yet. 
And <laughs> I said, this is probably my best Kanato I've ever done. What about home economics? No. Chlorography? No. What's going on in here? Mm. Is something in this locker? Lights, on the other hand, I've kind of struggled with, but oh. for some reason, oh. I don't know why. Oh my. With this recording. I think no, it turned out alright, though. I'm not being lewd. <laughs> science. Now, bend over for science. This is amazing. Now, bend over for science so was beautiful. me improv. It was my improv right there. Oh my. <laughs> Saturated colors of this painting. Actually, this could have been done much sooner, but the first time we tried to record it, record the footage, excuse me, the first time we tried to record the footage, it didn't work. Like, the, the capture card messed up. And that was like a couple hours, yeah, a couple hours of, you know, going through the game and capturing scenes. And I was just pissed off at the time, and I just didn't want to do it again. So it took a while before I finally sat down and did it all over again. And that's another big reason why it came out six months later, but... Nice rack. Teacher, where do I turn in this report on underwear to hair color correlations? See? This rack. It's just so functional. Hanging our towels for us. Nice breast. <laughs> and I was like, it was mine. That means his accessories are mine too. Know what I'm saying? Are you guys even listening? You know what? Fine. I'll go talk to the girls then. I think the talk to the girls bit was improv too. What kind of spices are they using? I know this is Zach's improv. Nice well, this here is Zach's improv. No big booze, McKenzie. It's like it's the third date, and he still hasn't kissed you. Like, you should totally break up with him. English? Like, that's the best I've ever seen this improv. It's Biology? it's amazing. I'm actually pretty exhausted right now. That's why, if I'm a little <laughs> really this deadpan, that's why. Club. But, you know. <laughs> hey, look, some new friends. What? Hey, guys, what? what's with the skull over here? What the? What was that for? Oh, and yes, I know, I misspelled Vito. <laughs> You guys keep pointing that out, I know. <laughs> like, I left a comment on this video because I know for a fact that I fixed Senpai at the end, but I guess I, when I try new things and it doesn't work out, I just press undo a bunch to, you know, undo all of it. And I might have accidentally overdid that and ended up getting Senpai back to misspelled. But I do know I fixed that. Laito, on the other hand, that was, that was me. <laughs> I messed up, so. I guess if you want something done right... Yes, I know, it's now Leoto. <laughs> hey, teacher! Why won't this all work? Whoa! Just what do you Whoa. think you're doing? Yeah, last I heard from this voice actress, she's actually doing pretty well. Like, for her career-wise. If you watch the, uh... If you watch the Matt and Zach plays of uh, the behind the scenes of this, you'll hear me talking about uh, Rachel Messer, who's the voice actress for the teacher. And I've actually met her and taken a couple classes from her. And uh, yeah, she's doing really, she's been doing really well for herself lately, as far as I can tell. But we're not exactly close. We just, oh. yeah. Oh, that's kind of hot. The announcement club? I'm very Anything tired. <laughs> Anything? <laughs> Zach had a little too much fun with this what? part. <laughs> I'll never get senpai. Well, if I can this is a little bit of a both hard and prof. I like I had the idea and he just improvised it. <laughs> We still on for Thursday? So the first time I recorded this, there was a glitch where uh, a guy was just walking into a wall. And that's when I added, hey guys, hey, are you doing alright? To Lyoto's part. 
and then when I uh, had to re-record it, I had to find a new glitch because we had recorded Lyoto saying that, and I still wanted to keep that in. And at least for this model, I don't know if he's fixed it. I need to update this, but the stairs are bad about glitching, so <laughs> I just <laughs> made a new glitch here and used it here. Hey man, are you right? Honestly, this one's better than the original ah! one, so it all worked out in the end. If you hear the behind the scenes of this one, the uh, the bloopers, you'll know this was Zach's improv too. <laughs> it just worked out. Oh my god, it's one of my favorite bits right there. Keep it coming. Yeah. So I don't know what's playing now. What's playing now? Oh, yeah, we we won't be doing these. But um, no, stop it. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, um, the extra stuff we've been doing, the the visual novel Let's Plays and stuff, we're kind of just buying time, trying to see if they'll make another season. We have an idea of what we're going to do if they don't make another season, but we want to see if they'll make another season, you know, so that hopefully we can continue the series, because we do love making it. It's a series we love making fun of, <laughs> for sure, but um, like I said, if nothing comes out of it. We just recently finished what translation we have of the visual novel, but we're going to try other things and hopefully, like I said, we've, we've hit 2,000 subscribers and the rate we're climbing is I'm very happy with. And if it continues to grow, I'm hoping we can get to the point where we'll be able to do this full time and you'll get to see more of this stuff more frequently. But till then, I'll keep working like I have, and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't kill me, but, <laughs> yeah, we love doing this, and as soon as it can pay, as soon as it can pay the bills, you know, we'll happily do it full time, but till then, thank you so much for all the love you've given us, we really do, like, just, you know, throughout all this, and just, if you really want to, like, whatever you signed up or subscribed to this channel for, whether it's Stavlog Lovers or whatever, please give our other work a chance, because that's really what's going to help us make this happen. But, um, yeah, I'm probably going to go to take a nap. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this has been fun. I need to work on my improv more, but, um, anyway, I'm Matt, and this is ADHD on Wild 7. Thank you guys. Love you. Bye.